educational vice president asks me to speak. I said, what do you want me to speak about? So I want you to motivate the guys about being true to the executives, coming out on time, following your manual speeches, paying your dues, and all of those sorts of things. And knowing, knowing that you hear that thing over and over, I wanted to tie that message into something practical that means something to you. We've recently <laughs> we've recently come through an election where one party was voted out in a big way. And this party that now is in power <laughs> a little over 40 days because of the size of its victory some pangs of arrogance are developing. And indeed, it is the trappings of leadership that cause arrogance. The trappings of leadership are blue plates, sometimes a driver, being called honorable, being spoken of first and last, and of course, being duly worshipped by the rest of us. And we forget that in order to have been elected, they had to do away with the trappings and go to the people and ask the people to support me. But something happened after they were elected. Unless you think I'm speaking alone, I'll give you a few examples. Last night, I went at the Cancer Society to listen to and watch the Pinnacle Seekers. I had to leave around 8 o'clock, and as I was leaving, the senator who spoke to this club a few weeks ago came in and pulled his car in the driveway. Nobody could come in, nobody could go out walked inside and dared anybody to move his car. I'm not telling you what I heard, I'm telling you what I saw. The security, the security was too intimidated, too intimidated to speak to him. We told him, go and tell him, move his car. He was too intimidated, of course he spoke with a foreign accent. Uh, he's in, in French. That's one thing. The reason I'm speaking here to you tonight is because after lots of follow-ups and, and letters and phone calls and all of this, the speaker, who is a member of government, not returning the calls, who had agreed to speak, one of the reasons I'm speaking to you tonight is because he didn't show up, I'm here. Say it again, Major. You will recall that very soon after the Long Island, after the after the after the election, the representative from Long Island just couldn't understand why he's not a cabinet minister. Arrogance. And lest you think it's me speaking alone, if you watched the news items on TV last night. The past, one of our past prime minister, Hubert Ingram, was speaking to the current government. He said there are those who think yeah. they got elected according to themselves. He said governments would rather not have to manage a huge majority. It's tough to do. Arrogance. He said you didn't get yourself elected. The people and the party got you elected. The tsunami. <laughs> and so, <laughs> the tsunami. The of arrogance. I understand that one of the young members of the house now struts around his office, demanding things, totally different from when he came in. What? Go on, Nancy. Is that a risk, gentlemen? Is that a risk? 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 Is that a ris
I'm so glad my friend. Arrogance. Arrogance needs to be dealt with. But dealt with at this level. Right now. One of the reasons I asked many of you to dress like me tonight. Just for my speech, arrogant. just to see who among the executive like would shun the arrogance. Yes. They are all wearing the trappings the that lead to arrogance. The <laughs> all in the suit, all in the tie, notwithstanding <laughs> the attempt to shake that so you can hear our speech. <laughs> And my thank you to the Indian past president. My thank you to all of those who decided to shake off the threatening of So you can hear me. So you can hear me. Gentlemen, gentlemen, remember this one thing. When you got elected, you got elected behind the goals of the president. Yes. And there was a concern. What can we say to these guys that can keep them coming out even if everything else falls? What can I say to you? Here's what I'll say to you guys. First thing I want to say to each one of you is this. You need your own goals beyond the club. If your goal is for the DCP plan and the leader is not showing up or calling on you or doing things, you're going to fail. But if your goal goes beyond this club, if you understand, if you understand that when you leave here, wherever you operate, that's how you will be. You must focus for yourself. When I became chairman of BEC, I had no training. I had not, I, all I could do is go back to my Toastmaster training. Minutes, parliamentary procedure, procedure committees, dealing with treasury reports. This is the laboratory of leadership training. But you need your goals. I sat down with Toastmaster Delmaro Duncan towards the end of his reign as division governor one year at lunch and I said, Delmaro, I said, what's going on? He said, Delmaro, they haven't taught me anything. I said, they taught you anything? You have a bunch of presidents and executives under you. You teach them. In your teaching, you lie. Carlos Palacios, Mitch. I'm looking for somebody to follow. Stop looking for somebody to follow. Everybody's following you. Do not make the mistake I made in my life. Speaker after speaker who heard me speak and audience members always told me for years, Keith, you're better than anybody. No, I've seen abroad. You need to go abroad. I kept sitting here crying. Why don't they hire me here? Why don't they hire me there? I was a big whale in a pond with no water. Your future does not have to be here. I said, I'm a Toastmaster Dwight. And, I, and we said, I said, son, the world is your oyster. You don't have to operate from here. No. I said, I'm a Toastmaster Palacios. We, he and I have a mental lunch every, every month. One month he pays, one month I pay. But he's a student. He sits and he listens. He's not in Silla just coming to the club here. No. Night. He's doing things. He's now opening an office in Miami. Yes. One in Mexico. Yes. One, in, one, in, one, in, one in Toronto. <laughs> he is sorry. Beyond is what is here? Why? He has his own goals. I do not talk about the Tony Longings of this world because I no longer mentor him. He now mentors me. He now mentors me. He's going above and far beyond I could ever go. That's where Carlos is headed. That's where Dwight is headed. That's where there are active living examples of people inside this club who move beyond. How do they do it? 
You know when you cut your teeth on speaking? When the program is empty and people don't show up, you jump up and you speak. That's right. Tell them something. When nobody else comes and is on time, you come and you on time. And you uh, people are watching you. If you want to be successful in this club, if you want to be successful in this club, do not be insolent. One of the beautiful things about 1600 is 1600. One of the terrible things about 1600 is 1600. Some of us come to this university and we never want to leave. We never want to leave. We, you have to show me what else you have done. Remember this one thing, guys, in life. Remember this one thing. There are no prime minister schools. There are no general manager schools. No. There are no senator schools. No. There are no minister of anything schools. No. And this is my biggest problem with the Bahamian populace. All of a sudden, these men who come in, we expect them to have a magic wand about fixing the Bahamas. Where did they get it from? Six months ago, they didn't know nothing about it. We have a Bahamas that is teetering on the brink. Freeport is in trouble. Jobs, loans, buy loans, everything. Where do you turn? I'll tell you where you turn. And Toastmaster Archer alluded to it. Life is mental. Greater than the hurricane that was here. Greater than all these problems over here, there is a terrible, terrible dearth of our people not seeing beyond the mud. People are not looking at the star. Every time I teach a speech class, I watch my students. They just go to work and come to class. Go to work, come to class. No goals. A couple of classes, I just drop the class and I spoke to them about their future, about their goals, yes. about where they want to go. Yes. This country yes. does not need $722 million loans. No. This country does not need the IDB to come in. This country doesn't need for Q1 the Chinese coming. What this country needs is for you and you and you to use your positive speaking ability, go into the community, touch lives, and talk to people and tell them there's a brighter day and it starts from inside you. Life. Is mental. Keep speaking, no matter. Life is mental. The gentlemen, these nine words I want you to remember. Nine words. And say after me. After you. If it is to be. If it is to be. It is up to me. It is up to me. If it is to be. If it is to be. It is up to me. So when you come here, don't blame. The EV, VPE if you're not on the program. Okay. Don't blame the VPE if there's no program. Okay. Don't blame the secretary if there is no bulletin. Okay. Don't blame anybody. Why? Because if you have your own goals that you are using to push through this program. This is a laboratory of leadership learning. Yes. And I have named example after example after example of successful people well, who well. have done well. Yes. yes. If it is to be, it is up to be. Say again, if it is to be, it's up to be. It's up to be. It's up to be. And now, the arrogance, the arrogance that I pointed out, that is seeping in, that told, that, 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 that Prime Minister Hubert Ingram talked about on TV. He talked about this. If you listen carefully, Arrogance. People will vote you out. Don't forget how you got into power. You got into power by taking off the trappings. I didn't see Jeff Lloyd in no suit. I saw him in a shape. I didn't see Darren Halfield in a suit. I saw him in a shape. Walk in the area, wake in the area, listening to the people, talking to the people. And when you see the situation of the people, and you see where you are, and where you can bring them to, when you see that, it humbles you. Yes. So instead of lying, when you get up to speak and say, I am thankful for the people of Foxhole who have allowed me to get here. Right? And you're only going back to them five years from now. Go back in the communities. The ideas are in the communities. And if you have nothing to offer, you offer them good thinking. You get me? Because life 
It's mental. As the mind thinking in his heart, so is what? So is always he. So, so if you keep worrying about the crime that you read about, if you keep worrying about the unemployment that you read about, then that's all you'll think about. But if you look and you see the future and you imprint it on your mind and you imprint it in your subconscious, you will begin to see the future. That's what they mean by casting a vision. The Bahamas will not get out of this mirage unless people like me and you lead mentally. Every time you read the things, you only hear about what is bad. Let's go where the country can go. But how do you do this first? You do this here. You do this here in your program. You do this at executive meeting. You do this with all of your members. Anyway, they didn't give me a time. But as I depart from you today, as I depart from you today, Fellow executives, you can look within your own club and see examples of success. But you can look within yourself. As Dr. Miles Monroe said, your future is not ahead of you, your future is inside you. What bothers you? What ails you? What questions you? What is gnawing at you? That's where your future is inside of you. And all you got to do is dig. Gold is valuable because you what? Dig. Diamonds are valuable because you do what? Dig. Oil is valuable because you do what? Dig. And you are of more value than all of that. So if you look inside of you where your future is, where all the ideas is, and you feed all that good positive stuff, then you spew it out. And you are leading your country to where it needs to go. And so you want to get rid of the trappings of leadership that leads to arrogance? Take off the track. Come down. Uh, Wake with people and have them. Mr. Chairman. Yeah.